Ahoi anō e ngā rangatira tēnei te mihi atu ki a koutou. I tatu mai nei tēnei wā te whakanui ake i te kaupapa i mui a mātou. Nō reira, a ka huri tēnei kōrua ki te kaiungo rungarawa te tīmata me te hakonga utunga o ngā mea katoa. Nō reira, nāna i homai māne e tango atu. Nō reira, e pā, tēnā koe. Tēnā koe ko taipai tātou i tēnei wā te whakanui ake i te kaupapa me te kōruru i mui a mātou. Nō reira, tēnā koe. He whakaaro hoki ki a rātou ko whetsurangi tia hare a tūra, ngā mate o tēnā o tēnā o marae hurino o te mutu. Anō reira, ki a rātou ko whetsurangi tia haere haere a moe a tūra. A tātou te kanu oro i hui hui mai nei i raru i te maru o tēnei a tātou kaupapa. Nau mai, nau mai, whakatau mai. Nau mai, nau mai, whakatau mai. Tauti mai te whakarongo ki te kaupapa a me te kōrero. A me ki te patu wahine, te patu whānau, me te waipiro. Te whakarongo me te kōrero e pāniki ene o ngā ngāngara. Ngā ngāngara e wanganui i ngā whānau hurino, hurino o Aotearoa me te ao hoki. Kia mōhio ai, so we understand. Heha ngā mahi pai, heha ngā mahi he i rote i tēnei a tātou kaupapa. Kia tau mai koutou, te patu, ngā whānau, te whakamana hoki i te whānau hoki. Kia tū he whānau kotahi. Kuna te hua, kia rapu ai e tātou. Kia rapu mātou i te hua, mai i tēnei a tātou kōrero, mai i tēnei a tātou kaupapa. Kā re au e kume ake tēnei kōrero i tēnei wā? He mihi tēnei ki a koutou, nau mai, whakatau mai. I raru i te maru o tēnei a tātou kaupapa. Tēnei kaupoi nō Waikato, taupiri te maunga, Waikato te awa, tainu te waka, he piko e tanifa. Nō reire, he mihi atu ki ngā kai kōrero, i haramai nei te kaue ai tēnei kaupapa i mui a mātou. Nō reire, e ngā rangatira mai tēna, mai tēna, mai tēna, i haramai nei te whakarongo ki te kōrero, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. A tēnā koutou katoa. Tātou, that was our uh, Waiata group from the Office of the Children's Commission and from Superu, and we've been we've recently returned from Te Matatini in Christchurch. 
to be able to perform for you all here today. <laughs> so I want to acknowledge everyone that uh, has come together in this um, in this time and practice that waiata. There's been a lot of hours going to that waiata, so kia ora tātou. Ai. Hoi anō, uh, tēnei te mihi atu ki a koutou anō, apiti hono tātou hono, te hunga wairua ki te hunga wairua. Uh, apiti hono tātou hono, a te hunga urua i hui hui mai nei, i raru i te maru o tēnei a tātou kaupapa, tēnā koutou, so um, before I hand it over, tēnei te mihi atu ki a koutou, um, e ngā rangatira, nau mai whakatau mai, tēnā koutou, a tēnā koutou, kia ora tātou katoa. Welcome everyone, um, kia ora tātou. Um, today we're launching um, our latest What Works publication. It's reducing the impact of violence, of alcohol and family violence. Before we hear from Tasia, um, I thought it would be really good for you to um, hear why we decided to commission this piece of work. Um, one of the things that I'm um, always mindful of, um, and it's from some work that Australia did a few years ago, is that um, alcohol is in some ways in the violence arena, the white elephant. It's the elephant in the room. Um, we don't seem to think about it in connection with violence prevention in any great depth in terms of particularly family violence. Um, and the WHO has another phrase that it always sticks in my mind, that it's a catalyst. Alcohol and um, interpersonal violence are a catalyst for each other. And if we are wanting to think about preventing violence, we need to be thinking about a whole range of factors, and alcohol is simply one of them. Um, last year, Subaru held a knowledge exchange forum between academics and policymakers. And they were academics and policymakers who weren't necessarily um, family violence experts. There was a wide range of disciplines who were present. But one of the themes that can continually came up at that forum um, was alcohol and the role it plays or didn't play in family violence. We felt this was something that we should be thinking about and to at least um, bring the evidence um, together. Um, and as part of that, we commissioned Shaw um, and Farihi Research Centre from Massey University to undertake a review of the literature. And this product is a result of that. Um, Tasia Huckle and with her colleague Sally Caswell um, did that literature review and um, we are here to hear from them, uh, from, from here from Tasia. Sally unfortunately has a very sore back and couldn't make it today. Um, Tasia is a, I'm going to quite read this, is an alcohol policy researcher with a lot of experience, she tells me, um, <laughs> in, in working in alcohol policy issues. Um, at, the, at Massey University, she is the quantitative team leader at Shaw, um, and she will talk a little bit more about her work um, there. Uh, her work focuses on examining the effects of alcohol policy in New Zealand and is currently works primarily with HRC uh, funded projects. Um, and I'd like to welcome Tasia to start. Sorry. Thank you, Rada. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Rada mentioned, my name is Dr. Tasia Huckle. I'm a senior researcher at the Shore and Fariki Research Centre. We're part of Massey University. Um, Rada has already given Sally's apologies, but I will give them as well. She very much wanted to be here today, but she um, was unable to be here because of health reasons. Just before I start the presentation, I'd like to acknowledge the expertise in the room today. I know there's a lot of people here who know a lot about family violence. And my hope for this presentation is to present the results of the literature review that we did for Superu. And, um, in the hope that this will be useful in informing policy and practice. So, this first slide is really to provide some contextual background around family violence in New Zealand. We know that family violence in New Zealand is a considerable health issue. It has a large impact on the physical and emotional well-being of children and whanau and it can also have intergenerational effects. We know that family violence is common in New Zealand. Nearly one in five partnered women report some form of IPV abuse in the last 12 months. There were nearly 11,500 substantiated child abuse cases within a six month period in 2012. And we know that women and children make up most of the victims of severe cases of family violence. 
So moving on to what the evidence showed, what we found from the literature review. In summary, we found that there was no doubt about alcohol's impact on intimate partner violence. We looked at well-conducted meta-analyses, and meta-analyses can be very powerful research designs. And we also looked at a range of other studies using a range of different methodologies. And we found that there was a clear association between alcohol use and intimate partner violence. And that association was larger for male to female perpetrated intimate partner violence than vice versa. We found an even larger association among male perpetrators who were the heaviest alcohol users, and that included some clinical, some clinical populations. We found that women experience more severe outcomes when alcohol is involved. And we also found in New Zealand that 25% of the most severe IP, sorry, intimate partner violence aggressive incidents involved alcohol. We don't have anything up there about Māori and Pacific populations currently, and that's because there is very little to no research available around the association of alcohol use and intimate partner violence around Māori and Pacific populations. So we haven't left them out, we just don't have anything to report. So moving on to alcohol and child maltreatment. What is child maltreatment? It's the physical, emotional or sexual abuse or neglect of a child. So we looked at meta-analysis and other studies, and much like intimate partner violence, we found a clear <coughs> association between caregiver alcohol use and child maltreatment. We found that alcohol is commonly involved in child protection cases, and that is both internationally and in New Zealand. And in a survey that we conducted in 2008, it was a general population survey of just over 3,000 people, we found that 17% of New Zealand children were harmed or abused because of someone else's drinking. There's also been some studies conducted looking at the availability of alcohol. So here I'm talking about alcohol outlet density and family violence. In a nutshell, the studies find that the higher the alcohol outlet density, the more intimate partner violence there is. Some studies were able to separate the effects of on-premises, so um, premises such as bars, restaurants, nightclubs, um, from the effects of off-premises such as supermarkets and, and liquor shops. Um, and those studies found that off-premises had a larger association with um, intimate partner violence than on-premises. So the density of off-premises compared to on-premises. The literature also showed that the higher the outlet density, the more child maltreatment occurs. And again, where studies were able to separate the effects of on-premises and off-premises, physical abuse was more associated with off-premise density and neglect or child neglect was more associated with on-premise density. That's likely because um, caregivers are spending their time drinking in the bars and nightclubs. So we know that alcohol is causally linked to violence. Currently the evidence for a causal relationship between child maltreatment and alcohol is um, less clear. There just isn't enough evidence to be able to draw a conclusion from, but there is certainly a clear association between alcohol use or heavier alcohol use and child maltreatment. So moving on to what can be done. So strategic action on family violence should consider alcohol as an aggregating factor, but without lessening attention paid to other variables that contribute to intimate partner violence or family violence, without reducing the accountability of the perpetrator, and there could be increased acknowledgement of alcohol's role in strategy and policy documents. When we were doing the review, looking through the strategy and policy documents in New Zealand, there was certainly gaps um, in terms of addressing alcohol in the role of, of family violence. Strategic intervention also requires a range of interventions at different levels, as no one single intervention can address family violence in its totality. So what did we find from the literature? In terms of prevention, there are some policies that could be implemented that will likely reduce family violence. So restricting the availability of alcohol, increasing the price, and restricting alcohol marketing. Now to be clear, the research evidence around um, restricting, um, for example, the availability of alcohol or increasing the price is quite limited. And that's around the fact that 
policy changes don't often happen. And there's also not a lot of robust family violence data that can be used to track changes over time. So that is helping to contribute to the, to the relative paucity of, of research. However, there are some strategy documents, World Health Organization and, a, and two recently released strategy documents from Australasia that recommend these three policies in terms of reducing family violence. In terms of targeted interventions, individuals and couples-based treatment have been found to reduce alcohol consumption and IPV. Again, the literature is quite limited. Some studies show this does work, some show it doesn't. Um, we also looked at court-based interventions. Um, there's a, couple, a few in New Zealand that I'll just briefly talk about. There are fi family violence courts in New Zealand, and these can refer offenders to alcohol treatment. There's also a pilot going on in some district courts, and this is where judges can receive assessments um, of offenders' alcohol and drug dependence status, if you like, and they can be referred to treatment. But this isn't in lieu of um, sentencing. It's not meant to be in lieu of sentencing. Brief intervention studies, specifically to reduce the impact of alcohol and IPV, or sorry, intimate partner violence, have not been conducted to the best of our knowledge, so we can't report on those. And we could not find any studies assessing interventions to reduce family violence by reducing alcohol use among Māori or Pacific. So in terms of future directions, joined up policy and programme responses is considered best practice in countries such as the UK and Australia. So what would this look like? Such things as better integrations of integration of services, consider for example including alcohol treatment providers in the family violence interagency response system, um, which is currently a um, collaboration between police, child, youth and family and women's refuge, but there is consideration going on to increase the number of service pro providers into the system to provide or to help provide wraparound <laughs> services. Ensure appropriate engagement with Māori and Pacifica in services and possibly the, and such as the VIARS um, and timely access to relevant services for Māori and Pacific and also increase funding for alcohol treatment. In terms of research, there are large gaps in our knowledge around alcohol and family violence in New Zealand. This is partly related to the fact that there's little administrative data that co systematically collects the involvement of alcohol and family violence incidents. Um, there have been a few specific surveys that have been conducted, but these have really been one-offs and they haven't been repeated in any, in any way. So from the research, we identified, well, excuse me, from the literature, we identified some, some future directions. Um, and these were reliable trend data of alcohol's involvement in family violence for New Zealand. Māori and Pacifica research, there's a very large gap there. Family violence and you know, assessing changes in availability and price or simply assessing relationships between family violence and ava availability and price. Looking into elder abuse and other less well documented types of family violence. What came out of the literature was really a clear focus on intimate partner violence or child maltreatment. There was very little published research, there was a little bit of grey literature around <coughs> such things as elder abuse and, and children that abuse their parents, but very little, very little. And of course, evaluations of interventions. If we're going to be putting in place interventions or if interventions are happening, it's so important to evaluate them to know that what we're doing is actually effective. Thank you very much.